Good day to each and everyone. My name is Hartzell Ayas. For this presentation, we'll be having the Chapter 1, The Learner-Centered Psychological Principles. Our Lesson 1 is Learning Principles Associated to Cognitive and Metacognitive Factors. First thing we need to have, let's differentiate the two. First, they're both thinking cups. It's just that we need to have the initiative to work for the cognitive and metacognitive that we are having inside our minds. For the cognitive, it's just like mental process that we need to have a point to remember something or to have idea that we will be needing in the near future. But on the other hand, for the metacognitive, it is like a switch in our mind that needs to be triggered to think critically and then afterwards you need to think beyond thinking so for the cognitive it is just the start or the first move for your thinking cup and then for the metacognitive it is the beyond thinking of your thinking cup in short Cognitive or cognitive factors refers to the mental processes the learners undergo as they process the information. And the way learners think about their thinking as they engage in mental tasks is the concern of the metacognitive factors. Metacognitive is knowing what we know and what we don't know. It refers to the learner's understanding and control of their cognitive process. For example, is the Bloom's taxonomy. The cognitive here is the remember and understand, wherein the students recall facts and basic concepts, wherein they, they define the lesson and also to understand the explained ideas or concept. And the metacognitive here is the apply, analyze, evaluate wherein they produce a new concept or justify their stand or decision in a certain topic and the metacognitive also uh, they can draw conclusion or they can use the information they learn in a new situations it is like applying what you have learned so let's have now the cognitive and metacognitive factors First is the nature of the learning process. The learning process of a complex subject matter is most effective when it is an intentional process of constructing meaning from information and experience. The example of uh, different types of learning processes are habit information in motor learning, learning that involves the generation of knowledge, Cognitive skills and learning strategies. Learning in schools emphasize the use of intentional processes that students can use to construct meaning from information, experiences, and their own thoughts and belief. Successful learners are active, goal-directed, self-regulating, and assume personal responsibility for contributing to their own learning. Therefore, a process of development and growth and it, it is characterized by flexibility because the individual has uh, skills to adapt itself constantly to the circumstances of the environment. Learning often defined as the modification of behavior. It's because uh, it produces change in behavior. Learning involves uh, problem solving. It helps to understand and discover relations between different contents and situation. So the learning is an automatic process and it takes place when the child becomes active. Learning goals are intended purposes and desired achievements of a particular course, which generally identify the knowledge, skills, and capacities of students in that class should achieve. Motivation comes from within. It can be inspired, encouraged, and facilitated by outside forces. But the most powerful result is enrancing. As teachers, we're tasked with helping students find their own motivations, leading them 
to suitable goals and lighting the path to get there. Each student from elementary has their own needs, strength, and motivators in order to improve everyone's skills and really zero in all individual needs in your classrooms. You should place more emphasis on personalized learning. The place to start is when developing personal learning objectives. One goals have been established, the steps to get there will be more clear. More importantly, students will know what their learning destinations is and will be motivated to embark on their journey. Short term goals. This small milestone can actually set the stage for accomplishing goals over longer term or be used throughout the year. Term goals work well for younger students, but you should discount their word for older students. Everyone loves that feeling of accomplishment. Plus, they are a great way to get the ball rolling and introduce goal setting to students. Example of short-term goal is wanting to read one chapter of a book each day for two weeks. Here the idea is that accomplishing the goal will increase reading time, improve reading skills, and hopefully allow students to develop a habit of reading more frequently. Term. So these goals will involve multiple steps and require check-ins along the way to ensure that the students is still on track. As mentioned earlier, you can sometimes check off short-term goals along the way as they lead up the main goal. So, encouragement is key here as a will, a simple reminder of both the goal and the required pacing. Next, we have the construction of knowledge. The successful learner can link new information with existing knowledge in meaningful ways, meaning students have the abilities to link new information with their existing knowledge in different ways they want, if they wanted to. In, this constru in their construction of knowledge, also they are also capable of um, linking new information which is connected to the prior knowledge and also it has the capability of learning more and building it. Knowledge widens and deepens as students continue to build links between new information and experience under existing knowledge base, meaning knowledge of the knowledge of the students can be learned through their experience and also their existing knowledge. Unless the new knowledge becomes integrated with the learner's prior knowledge and understanding, this new knowledge remains isolated and cannot be used effectively in tasks and does not transfer readily to new situations. So strategic thinking, it is the successful learner can create and use a repeater of thinking and reasoning strategies to achieve complete learning goals. So when we say strategic thinking, it is being developed a strategy or a plan to achieve a particular vision. Every day we make decisions to our life. Sometimes our decisions are based on an impulses that we need to face along with unfavorable consequences to our actions. When we say strategic thinking, it is a process of examining the organization's surroundings and resources to better formulate a strategy. So it is an understanding of an organization's external or internal environment. It deals with the creation and better utilization of resources to meet objectives and priorities. And this is drawn from facts, data, and instructions attempt. Intuitive thinking is sensing or knowing without using rational process such as reading facts and instructions, it making choices and decisions according to one's hunch and get feeling without knowing the reason why. With a critical mind nor analytical mind usually exercise strategic thinking. So for example, we all know or some of the time probably we experience that teacher give their students multiple tasks. However, the successful learner will not complain on it. In fact, they will see it is opportunity to learn more to experience more or discover more knowledge because they have a strategic thinking even though it is hard for the learner 
However, they have a strategy to plan or to think wisely decision. For example, a public speaking or a task or public speech. Some of students are not good at this field. They are not used to this platform. They don't have a confidence to speak in front of many people. However, a successful learner will probably think other ways or to think strategy on how to do such things. Prob probably practicing with their self, like listening their speech, like locking or talking their in front of the mirror. After that, you can invite your family or friends or your neighbors to see your performance to give constructive feedback so it can help to improve your performance. So we should think uh, ways, plans, or any kind of strategies to reach your goals. So strategic thinking for the learners. So successful learner can reflect on how they think and learn, set reasonable learner or performance goals and monitor their progress toward their goals. So when we say successful learner, they are active goal-oriented and self-regulating. A successful learner also know what to do if a problem occurs if they are not uh, making sufficient or timely process toward the goal by generating methods to reach their goal or re reassesses the appropriateness and utility of the goal. It means that the successful learner is a resourceful person. You have a find ways on how to manage things just to reach your goal. Instructional methods that focuses on helping students develop this higher order or metacognitive strategies that can enhance student learner and personal responsibilities for learning. So this will use learners to guide their facilitations for of learning in which in phase of the instructional process. Thinking about thinking, it is a higher order strategy for selecting and monitoring mental operations facilitate creative and critical thinking. In their most common senses, the terms thought and thinking refer to conscious cognitive processes that can happen independently of sensory simulation. Successful learners can reflect on how they think and learn, set reasonable learning or performance goals, and monitor their progress towards their goal. Successful learners also know what to do if a problem occurs or if they are not making sufficient or timely progress towards a goal by generating alternative methods to reach their goal. Instructional methods that focus on helping learners develop these higher order metacognitive strategies can enhance student learning and personal responsibility for learning. For example, a student learns about what things help him or her to remember facts, names, and events. A student learns about his or her own style of learning. A student learns about which strategies are most effective for solving problems. Example, if we, if we want to remember something, we create an acronym to easily remember what we want to remember. Context of learning. Learning is influenced by environmental factors, including culture, technology, and instructional practices. So learning does not occur in a vacuum, means learner-centered principles and learners discover and construct meaning from information and experience based on their unique perceptions of thoughts, and feelings and also more information doesn't necessarily mean more learning and students impact the cultural or group influences to relevant variables such as motivation orientation and ways of thinking and also technologies and instructional practices must be appropriate for learners level of knowledge so last is the classroom environment. This can be also the significant impacts on student learning that will have a prior knowledge to the learners.